Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Happy Easter, everybody. The Lord is risen. He is alive. He is alive. He is alive. Praise the Lord. This morning's title. He is risen indeed is what we'll be ministering on. He is risen indeed. And yes, worthy is the Lamb. That's what Trish is going to open up with. Easter, if you will, Resurrection Day. Um, it's one of the most solemn Christian days of the year. And, and there's always this weird talk about it's solemn and being respectful, but we have something to shout about. We have something to praise the Lord about. Jesus has alive. Jesus made a way for you and me to come into the Lord's presence. When, when he gave his life upon Calvary's cross and he was raised the third day, he made a way for each one of us. But let's go to the Lord in prayer this morning. Heavenly Father, we just come to you right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray that you will be glorified this morning. Lord, we pray that you will anoint the, the singing and the preaching, Lord, that you will minister to those that hear this message in this sanctuary and those that tune in by Facebook. Lord, we pray that you will have your way. Lord, we ask that you will bless the offerings and bless those that give, Lord. Let it be used for your glory and your glory alone. Lord, just have your way. Remove us out of the way and help us lift up the name of Jesus today. And it's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen and amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Wow. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yes. Worthy is the Lamb. Hallelujah. So let's go into praise and worship this morning and just give Him all the honor and praise that is due Him. And we just, we love the Lord. We just want to do His bidding. Hallelujah. And Hallelujah. part of that bidding is just worshiping Him and praising Him and telling others about Him. So let's do that. Let me hit play here. More more guys to everyone. That's right. Perfect in heaven.
there says he's seated on the throne. And yes, he is.
worth living because he lives. It may not seem like it for some people, but it's worth it. Because in the end, we do win. Hallelujah. We get all the rewards. Praise the Lord. This last one, living hope.
the presence of the Holy Spirit this morning, but I definitely do. Uh, this is one of those days of great reflection uh, on what the Lord has done for us. It should be a, we should also reflect on what we should do for Him. He's died and given us everything. He gave His all. He gave His all and do do we trust our Savior or our Lord? And it's important to remember He's our Lord and King as well. He is our Master. But at the same time, He's a friend that sticks closer than a brother. Amen. He's long-suffering. He's merciful. He's gracious. His mercies are new each morning. But let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we just come to you right now in the name of Jesus, Lord. We give you all the praise and the honor and the glory, Lord. We thank you for your sinless life, your sinless sacrifice. You're making a way out of no way to redeem each of us, to redeem lost mankind. Heavenly Father, I just pray that you'll have your way here this morning. That you will speak to hearts and lives here in the sanctuary as well as by Facebook. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen and amen. We take the title today right from the passages, right from the scriptures that we're going to be reading from. Uh, and I prayed about this. What should I speak on this morning? And the Lord just drew me right here to the this chapter. And if you've been listening to the resurrection, or whether it's to you, he's speaking to every one of us. So starting at Luke 24, verse 1, it says, Now upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came unto the sepulcher, bringing the spices which they had prepared. And certain others with them. So they came to prepare a dead body. Is what they came to do. They came to prepare a dead body on the first day of the week. Sunday, which is the Lord's day. Understand, Sunday is not the Sabbath. Don't call it the Sabbath. Jesus Christ is our Sabbath. It's not even a day anymore. And the scriptures bear that out, by the way, in the New Covenant. And they found the stone rolled and they entered in. Entered into what? The empty grave. The grave was empty. And found not the body of the Lord Jesus. And it came to pass as they were much perplexed thereabout. Behold, two men stood by them and expected to see an empty tomb. They should have believed the word of God. And you know, we don't, now don't fault them too much, because we can be the same way. And we're going to, that's going to play out here a little bit, that we need to pay attention to the scriptures as we go through this. Behold, two men stood by them in shining garments, believed to be angels, and as they were afraid and bowed down their faces to the earth, they said unto them, Why seek ye the living among the dead? Why seek ye the living among the dead? I mean, we need to seek the living 
in Jesus. We need to seek the living. Seek the living in the Word of God. Why do we try to find life in things that will kill us? And kid, not just us physically, but spiritually. We're really good at that as human beings. Trying to find is alive. And he's not, he's the great high priest. He's not offering up sacrifices anymore. He's not doing religious works anymore. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. What does that mean for us? It means the work is finished. The legalism is finished. We are free and have liberty in Him. He did all of that for us. That we can come right to God. We can abide in Christ and He in us. That was one of the messages I think this week about abiding in Christ. How do we do that? By faith. By trusting in Him. By trusting in Him alone and allowing the Holy Spirit to the third day rise again. And they remembered his words. They had forgotten his words. And then they remembered his words. See, they should have known that tomb was going to be empty. We read his words. We read his words all the time. We hear his sermons. Do we remember it? Or do we forget his word as soon as the going gets tough? As soon as the devil punches us in the gut. Do we just forget his word? Listen, I'm going to tell you, I love you. He's talking to me too, but no matter the circumstances, the response should be to trust in the Lord, stand on his word, and forget about how we feel and what it looks like. Not be consumed with how we feel or what the circumstances look like. I'm going to stand on God's word. It was Mary Magdalene and Joanna, and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and other women who were with them, which told these things unto the apostles. The women were the first one to proclaim the tomb was empty. They were the first, like, evangelists after Christ was rose from the dead and was out of that tomb. They were the first one to evangelize. They were first one to share the testimony. I shared the, the testimony of the gospel of Christ being risen. Then arose Peter. And then here comes one of the guys, one of the main guys. At a day late and a dollar short, sort of. After the women already been there and left, words Christ said. He didn't even remember the words Christ said. He had Christ right in front of him. Look, if they had Christ right in front of them teaching them, obviously that he was God, the Messiah, and they couldn't remember it. They get consumed. Do you think we're any different? And behold, two of them went the same day to the village called Emmaus, which was from Jerusalem, about three score furlongs. That says about seven miles here in the study note. And they talked together of all these things which had happened. And it came to pass that while they communed together, while they talked together and reasoned, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. Jesus went near, drew near, and went with them. Do you know when you think about the things of God, when you meditate upon the things of the Lord, when you speak about those things, do you know that Jesus will draw near to you? Amen. Do you know that the Lord will draw whose name was Cleopas, answering, said unto him, Are you only a stranger in Jerusalem, and have not known the things which are come to pass there in these days? And he said unto them, What things? And they said unto him, Concerning Jesus of Nazareth, which was a prophet, mighty indeed, and word before God and all the people. You know, he did talk about Jesus being the Messiah. Their faith had begun to waver. Their faith had begun to waver. But why? The tomb was empty. And yet they're still wavering. And how the chief priests and our rulers delivered him.
killed him half and have crucified him. <clears throat> but he trusted that it had but he but we trusted that it had been he which should have redeemed Israel. Should have. Should have. We had trusted also of our company made us astonished, which were early at the sepulchre. And when they found not his body, they came saying that they had also seen a vision of angels, which said that he was alive. And certain of them which were with us went to the sepulchre. Let's talk about Peter and John. And found it even so, as the women had said, but him they saw not. So they didn't even believe that story. They're doubting that story. Then he, then, then he said unto them, who's he? Jesus. Then he said unto them, I love Jesus. Jesus you know, Jesus ain't always... This, this idea that you got to be politically correct and, and you got to build up people's self-esteem all the time. You know, you don't want to you don't want to destroy somebody. You don't want to judge them, but they need to hear the truth. In a sense, old fools and slow of heart to believe all that the what? Prophets. All that the prophets have spoken. Or in other words, to believe the Bible. All that's in the Bible. So check this out. He's talking to us this morning. Oh fool. He's talking to the preacher this morning. Okay? All of us. Oh fools and slow of heart. All that the oh fool. Then he said unto them, Oh fools and slow of heart, to believe all that the prophets have spoken. We say we're believers and Christians, but do he wants us to believe the word. And we got this is leading us somewhere. This is leading us somewhere. Because he came to redeem us. And he also came to do us with power. And Moses and all the prophets, again, drawing us back to the word. And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning what? Religion, denominationalism, nope, Jesus himself, all the things concerning himself, and they drew nigh unto the village, whither they went, and made, and he made as though he would have, he should, he would have gone further, but they constrained him, saying, "Abide with us, abide with us, for it is." Toward evening, and the day is far spent, and he went in to tarry with them. And it came to pass, as he sat at meat with them, he took bread and blessed it, and brake it, and gave to them, and their eyes were open, and they knew him, and he And they said, one to another, did not our heart burn within us when we talked? When he talked with us, and while he opened to us the scriptures, when he talked to us, and he opened up the scriptures, to draw out things that we read in the word. He's going to call to mind the things that we put in. So you know, that when you was a kid growing up, and you went to school, and I don't know if they still say it in school these days, and, but they used to tell us, you are what you eat. Did they tell you that in school? Did they ever tell you that in school, Emily? Your mom tells you that? You are what you eat. Now listen to this, spiritually speaking, brothers and sisters. Mama. You eat. Hallelujah. Spiritually speaking, you are what you eat. Are you going to feed upon manna from heaven? Are you going to feed upon the Word of God and proper biblical teaching? That and the authors that write about that junk, or are you going to read the Bible? Are you going to read behind somebody if you choose to read outside of the Bible and further your education? Are you going to read and study behind someone that's preaching the truth? You are what you eat spiritually.
Man, I love that. Did not our hearts burn within us when he talked with us by the way and while he opened to us the scripture? Remember when you first got saved? That scripture right there could apply to almost every one of us. Where's that fire now, folks? Where is that, that burning heart now? I'm not asking you to give me an answer. That's a rhetorical question that you need to take to the Lord. Where is that burning heart within now? He died to make a way for you to be restored with God and so that you would have a burning heart for Him, for God, for the things that are holy. And they rose up the same hour and returned to Jerusalem and found the eleven. Who's the eleven? That's the eleven. That's the eleven apostles, disciples that are after Judas, you know, bailed, sold out Jesus. And they found the eleven gathered and them who were with them, saying, The Lord is risen indeed. The Lord is risen indeed and has appeared to Simon. And they told us, and as they spoke, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them and said unto them, Peace be unto you. So they came in. They said he's risen indeed. And then what happened? Boom. Jesus shows up. Just boom. There he is. Amen. Yeah, he did. But they were terrified. Now this is a response. They were just told he's risen indeed. He shows up. But they were terrified and affrighted, and supposed that they had seen a spirit. You know, that's why a lot of Christians are afraid of the things of Christ, and including the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Something that glorifies Jesus Christ is not of a demon spirit. That's right. Let me tell you that. If it, if it does not is done at the cross, it's of a demon spirit. The baptism of the Holy Spirit glorifies Christ and what Christ did is not of a demon spirit. You don't have to run around, Ooh, is that the Holy Spirit? Is that the demon? I don't know what that is. I'm talking to everybody here and tuning in. <coughs> no demon spirit is going to glorify anything about Jesus. That's biblically accurate and biblically correct. So, they had supposed that they had seen a spirit. And he said unto them, Why are you troubled? And why do thoughts arise in your hearts? Why are you acting like you're a scary cat? Why are you afraid? Behold my hands and my feet. That is, that it is, I myself handle me and see. For a spirit has not flesh and blood. See me have. And when he had thus spoken, he showed them his hands and his feet. And while they yet believed not for joy and wonder, he said unto them, Have you here any meat? And they gave him a piece of broiled fish. Took it and did eat before them. And he said unto them, These are the words which I spoke unto you. Again, these are the words which I spoke unto you, which means he is the word, which talks about the word of God as well, the Bible. Well, I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses, that's the old covenant, and in the prophets, that's the old covenant, and the Psalms, that's the old covenant, concerning me. Those preachers that tell you you shouldn't study the Old Testament are cuckoo for cocoa puffs. All right, you're gonna you need to understand that the whole Bible and what Christ would do. The Old Covenant points to Christ and what He would do. The New Covenant points back to what Christ did. Then opened he their understanding. Who opened their understanding? Jesus. God in the Bible, we in the Word. You know, we had an interesting conversation uh, last week, uh, last week or two weeks ago, when we had a, um, 
one of our Friday nights, and we won't bring up the participants who were talking, but they said what, one of the participants said that when they're in the Word, they're more grounded and settled and surrendered and living, and when they're not in the Word, things sort of, and I'm paraphrasing, things start going kiji kaswampus. You know, they start falling apart. And they start, our walk starts getting a little off. And we get consumed with ourselves and our feelings. And, 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 you know, instead of being focused on Him, we don't have peace. We have fear or anxiety or anger rising up. The time with Him. There is no better place to be than in the presence of God. Communing with Him. Then, then open he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. We're almost done. And said unto them, Thus it is written. Thus it is written. Again, here we go. Thus it is written. And thus it behooved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day. It behooved Christ, it behooved Christ to be beaten, to be crucified. And to rise from the dead the third day, and that what? And that repentance and remission of sins should be oh. not, you, you should deserve to be rich. Not that you're not going to have any more problems, but what should be preached? Repentance and remission. He died, so repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name, not in a preacher's name, not in Roman Catholicism's name, not in the Pope's name. Among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem, and you are witnesses of these things. And behold, and behold, oh, here, he gives them the great commission. And then he says, and behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. I send the promise of my Father upon you. But tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. From on high. So it doesn't say command here in other places it says command. But, he's, but he ain't suggesting it either. He's saying it. He's given a direct statement. And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. Jesus is speaking. He's sick. He's sending the promise of God the Father. And what is that promise? God the Holy Spirit. But tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with power on high. Let's go to Acts 2. Acts 2, 1 through 4. The Holy Spirit used Luke to write both. To write both. Acts and Luke. The Gospel of Luke. Well, I'm going to bring this up here as we was watching camp meeting. It says, most of the way, it says, halfway down here, if you would, in Acts 1.1. O oh, Theophilus, of all that Jesus began to both do and teach, that he's writing that, that what Jesus did and what Jesus taught. Until the day in which he was taken up, after that he through the Holy Spirit had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen. He had given commandments unto the apostles himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs. So there, there was no reason to doubt that he was alive. Being seen of them 40, 40 days, and speaking of things pertaining to the kingdom of God. Of the Father, which said he, you have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days hence. Not many days hence. When they therefore were come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, will you at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? And listen, this is what he said. And he said to them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father has put in his own power. And he's like, Why are you worried about that? 
You didn't, you're missing out what I already told you. But you shall receive power after that the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be witness unto me. You shall receive power and you shall be witnesses, martyrs unto me. You shall live for me. Both in Jerusalem and all in Judea and all in Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. And when he has sight. Now you go to 2, 1 through 4. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come. And suddenly. And suddenly. And suddenly. And suddenly. There came a sound. A sound, not an actual rushing wind, but a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled the house, it filled the temple where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire. It sat upon each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. And began to speak with other tongues, as the Spirit of God gave them the utterance. They, nobody taught them how to speak in tongues. God gave it to them. You don't go to a brought it up. Which one brought it up? Uh, do you remember? Uh, the, guest, the guest one from Kentucky. Tommy Bates? Yes. Yeah. One of them brought it up during the camp meeting this week. Um, Start talking like a baby. Yeah, I was just going to use Google. And there's another one, like, they're saying certain phrases and then say it real fast. And try saying some words backwards. Listen, that's all hogwash. I've heard it all. Listen, I've literally heard it all. Well, maybe not. No, not everything. I heard a good, I heard enough mess. I've seen enough mess. Okay. They were trying to, they were praying for me to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And they said, raise your hands. Praise the Lord in English. And I did. Oh, you're speaking in tongues. Hmm? You're speaking in tongues. I mean, they really, literally, they did that to me. They, and I'm going to tell you something. I'll, I'll be honest with you. It, it was out of that, that fellowship I came out of. It was out of that fellowship I came out of, uh, you know, called the Assemblies of Goo Goo. But anyway, listen. I'll, I'll say this. When you receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, He will give you utterance and the faith to release it. When you ask for the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and when you say, Lord, I will receive it by grace through faith in you and what you've done at Calvary. My faith is in you. You have to let it go. Just like you received your salvation by faith. It's for every believer. It's for Emily, as young as Emily is. Nathan. It's for Nathan as young as he is. I, I, I'm talking about he got it at eight years old. I know kids who've gotten it at five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. It's for every single person, every single believer. It, it doesn't make you saved. It don't give you that's good that he has for us. Why would we not want? If it's in the Bible, if it's in the Bible, why would we not believe it? How many times did Jesus, in that chapter, bring them back to the Scriptures? About seven, eight times? Nine, ten times? And why are there people, people in our, in our Christian world, they use this, and they can't do it, but they try to do it. They try to use this to debunk the baptism in the Holy Spirit. Man, how did you go from Easter to baptism in the Holy Spirit? He was risen. He, the Holy Spirit. Someone that would be with us all the time, in us, empowering us, working in us, non-stop. As we believed in Him... And there's Christians that take this and they try to debunk it. They say, no, it's not for today. Nothing in the scripture that says it's not for today. Nothing. It's only says the devil. There's nothing in the scripture. The scriptures say the exact opposite. Now you say in it's of the devil, I would say you're committing blasphemy of the Holy Spirit in the way. 
Their own heads get in the way. Their fears get in the way. Their unbelief gets in the way. But it's for every one of us. The question is, do you want what God has for you? He is risen indeed. And He was risen to restore us in the right relationship with God the Father, that we can have fellowship with Christ, that we can abide in Christ by faith, and He in us, and the Holy Spirit can indwell in us, but He died also that we can receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. One more verse. We got, man, praise the Lord. The Lord, this went faster than I thought. But, Matthew 3. Matthew 3. I think it's Matthew 3, 11. And went down to be baptized. And John the Baptist says this, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. But he, as Jesus, who comes after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear, he shall baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. He shall baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire, the power of God. That Fire the Holy Spirit to burn off the impurities, the dross, the dregs, the, the things that are not good, the bad attitudes, the sins, the pride, the arrogance. Gave his heart and life to redeem each one of us. And I do believe that everybody here this morning is saved. Do I know for sure? No. But I believe through your testimonies. The Lord working in your lives that you are saved, you're born again. And He also went to that cross. Went, and that the Comforter, he, did, he wouldn't leave us comfortless. He wouldn't leave us helpless. Spirit here. Another reason why He died was to pour out the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. upon us. Read Joel 2. Peter, the very first I think it was Peter who preached the very first sermon after Pentecost. And he talked about little boys. And I want to see if I can find it here. Joel 2. Oh, this, is, this, is, this, for, this for Emily. Verse 28, And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my Spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. It's for you too, young lady. It says all flesh. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. Nathan. And also upon the servants and upon the handmaids. In those days will I pour out my spirit. And I will show wonders in heaven and in the earth. Blood of call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. For in Mount Zion and Jerusalem shall be deliverance as the Lord has said. And in the remnant whom the Lord shall call. You know, there's a note here in the Expositor Study Bible. It says, the entirety of these passages proclaim three great outpourings of the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost. During the future great tribulation and during the millennium. Listen, he's going to pour out his spirit. Do you want it? Do you believe in the word of God? Do you want it? Listen, if you want me to... If you want me to pray for you, to receive, I'll pray for you. Or you can receive it on your own. You can lift up your hands and you can to call me and ask me the questions. If there's the slightest bit of doubt. Because listen, I, I'm not trying to be ugly or push something down your throat or be mean-spirited to any of you. I'm not, that's not what I'm doing. But I'm telling you, we need this to move forward. Yeah. As a church... As a body of Christ, as individual believers, we need this moving forward. 
And our young people need it more. Our young people have it so much harder than we had. They have Satan in their schools telling them it's okay to be a homo. Go ahead, experiment. Fear and bow down to the government and worship the government. No. And, and, and they, they tell them that God's not real. Yeah. It's a fairy tale. Your parents are backwards. Hmm? That's what they say in the schools. Listen. Our kids have it so much worse than we do. Do you not think they need the baptism of the Holy Ghost? With the evidence of speaking in tongues, they need it. They need it. He is risen indeed. He is risen indeed. And He sent His Spirit to us. The Holy Spirit to fill us. To baptize us in the Holy Spirit. To empower us. We will serve the Lord. Choose this day whom you will serve. You're going to serve God? You're going to serve religion? You're going to serve government? You're going to serve the world? Who will you serve? It's a choice. Listen, every choice we make really is a... We need to take into consideration who we'll serve. I'm not being... There's so much more that he has for each one of us. So much more. We can be so much closer to him. Do you have a desire for more of him today? If you have a desire for more of him, listen. The door baptized in the Holy Spirit, those who have not been baptized, that they will lift up their hands and by faith in you and what you've done in Jesus Christ, that you would baptize them in the Holy Spirit and they would speak with other tongues. Lord, those that have been baptized and haven't been filled in a while, I pray that you will refill them. I pray that you will remove the things that are in the way, the thoughts that are in the way, the emotions that are in the way, and refill them again, Lord. Let their heart burn within them again for you. Let their heart burn within them again within them again, to be in your presence, and when they're in your presence, let their heart burn within, Lord. Let our hearts burn within every son.